Hello everyone, this is Harry. In this issue, we have a French crime film, Counter Investigation. Richard was a policeman and his wife was an anaesthetist. They also had a lovely daughter, a very happy family of three people. That weekend, Richard was going to take his daughter out to play. As soon as he got out of the gate, the police called. One of Richard's people was arrested for carrying drugs and need to be released on bail under Richard's name. Richard had to leave his daughter at home. He would be back in an hour. After Richard left, the daughter went online and told her friends about her sadness. The little boy who often talked with her asked her to meet in the woods. The little girl got interested and went to the appointment by bike. When Richard came back from the police station, he found that his daughter was not at home but didn't think much about it. He thought his daughter must have gone to play with the little boy again. But after a while, the bad news came from his colleague. One runner in the woods found the body of the little girl. Richard was devastated at the news. His nine-year-old daughter was the spiritual support of his family. She was the reason of happiness for the whole family, and now she was dead for no reason. The police didn't find any clues left by the murderer at the scene. But the coroner found lubricant on the girl's body. After investigation, the little boy could be ruled out. The police sent a large number of people to investigate. The suspect, Daniel, was quickly arrested, but the police didn't find any DNA evidence. There was only a way to dig important confessions out of Daniel. Although Daniel admitted that he had been to the woods, he strongly denied killing the little girl. But in the face of experienced police, Daniel's confession was full of flaws. He revealed information that only the murderer could know, so that the police immediately convicted him. One year later, Daniel hired a lawyer to withdraw his confession. And said that he was forced to confess at that time. Because the investigators at the trial were colleagues of the little girl's father. They were rushed to conviction without witness and DNA evidence. It was obviously unfair to Daniel, even though the lawyer was right. But in the eyes of the public, Daniel's crime was still inevitable. In the end, the jury found murder guilty by a majority of eight votes. Daniel was sentenced to 30 years in prison. While Daniel was in prison, he began to write letter. He stealthily hid the first letter he had written into the hangar in the closet. Then he started writing again to the little girl's father. Daniel told Richard in the letter that he understood the pain of losing his daughter. He also argued that a person who seemed to be the culprit might not be the real murderer. And the real murderer might live nearby, and maybe he would kill others again. Missing his daughter and the murderer's shameless sophistry made Richard angry and painful. He could only secretly hid in the bedroom and cry silently, and dared not let his wife find out. Another year later, Richard was out on the case. He overheard the radio report that recidivists killed children many times. He had been charged four times and was now detained in Bordeaux. Richard got to Bordeaux as soon as he knew about the child murder case. He had a hunch that the child killer had something related to the murder of his daughter. In fact, this was also the letter from a year ago, which made him shake his heart. Richard went through four cases and found the child murderers. The murder was very similar to the murder of his daughter. Most importantly, the Daniel's cousin lived close to the woods where his daughter was killed. Richard immediately found that cousin. He learned that Daniel came here the day after the crime. This convinced Richard that the killer of his daughter was probably another child murderer. And in prison, Daniel would often write to express his innocence and kindness. The evidence showed that there was a man who did go to the woods on the day of the crime. At that time, he was employed by the road construction company and sent to the garbage dump by his boss to burn waste. On the way, he must pass through the woods, and that period of time was also the time when the little girl was killed. Although the evidence directly pointed to him, he argued that he had killed people, but he didn't kill Richard's daughter. When Richard knew the truth, he wrote back to Daniel for the first time. He pointed out the child killer suspect in the letter and asked Daniel to show evidence that he was not the murderer. To help him bring his daughter's killer to justice. Daniel was deeply relieved when he read the letter. In prison, he wrote to a number of girls who admired him. The girls believed in Daniel and often wrote love letters to encourage him not to give up. There was a divorced woman who was very mysterious and always sent letters anonymously. With only one email address left, Daniel seemed to have grasped a life-saving straw. Secretly wrote a letter for the lawyer to pass on to the woman. On the other hand, Richard put together a set of evidence. He found that every time a child killer committed a crime, he found it near the railway. In other words, child killer was traveling by train. Richard speculated by time that his daughter should be the second child killed. Then Richard found the doctor who treated the child killer to understand the situation. He went out and immediately found the reporter to expose his investigation, in order to find the witness of that day, after seeing the news, Richard's wife and colleagues scolded Richard for making trouble. They were sure that Daniel who claimed to be in prison was the murderer. But shortly after the report was broadcast, some witness came forward. A girl said she was also running in the woods and had seen child killer, and took out a notebook to prove what she said. After checking and investigating, Richard found out that she had no contact with Daniel. The case could be retried in a formal court session. The boss scolded Richard for losing his mind, because anyone who had ever worked on this case could be sure that Daniel was the real murderer. But Richard firmly believed that his judgment was correct, and he must let the murderer of his daughter be killed. He also wrote to Daniel to cheer him up, because the trial in court might be wrong. 
he even hired a lawyer for Daniel. Unfortunately, his wife accidentally saw the letters between Richard and Daniel. She scolded her husband for losing his mind and wanted to help Daniel out of prison. Richard only responded that he didn't want to involve his wife, just tried to punish the real killer. The wife was very disappointed with what her husband had done and went back to her mother's home in sadness. At the day of the retrial, the girl swore that she had actually seen the child killer that day. But the child killer refused to admit that the girl's testimony was planted. In the end, the court acquitted Daniel and got $200,000 in compensation. As Daniel returned to prison to pack, the plot reversed. It turned out that Daniel was a real murderer. The first letter he secretly hid was about the details of the murder. Daniel had been betrayed when he was young, leading to mental distortion. What was more shocking was that the little girl was the third person he abused. After three years in prison, this beast in clothes had no regret. He still recalled the scene with relish. Even on the TV station, he said that he was a man of faith. The court was not to blame for the wrong sentence. And the witness girl who appeared in court was the woman who wrote anonymous letters. Daniel showed his love for her and claimed that he had always loved her. Cheated her to hand in and removed the letters between them. He also said that he would go to live abroad with her and let her come back to find herself in a few months. After seeing off her, Daniel visited Richard's house. Richard was not surprised by Daniel's arrival and offered him a drink. After drinking, Daniel asked Richard to go to the little girl's room and pray for her. At this time, the plot reversed again. As soon as Daniel entered the little girl's room, he was put down by Richard's anesthetic in the wine. It turned out that Richard had long been convinced that Daniel was the real killer. But there was no sentence of death in France, and the murderer of his daughter would still be released after 30 years. Richard, who had been a policeman for 15 years, had seen too many broken families. Although many fathers hated the murderers, but they couldn't survive for such a long time. Because they would die before the murderer came out. He was afraid that even if he was still alive, he would forget his daughter's death. But the hatred was smoothed by time. He was also shaken by Daniel's letters. But when he learned from the doctor that the child killer had already lost his sexual ability. He knew that Daniel was lying, and the appearance of the witness girl confirmed Richard's conjecture. That's why Richard decided to save this hateful beast from the legal shield. Bury him alive, and let go of the hatred. A few days later, the media reported that Daniel was missing, but didn't talk whether he was alive, only thought that he suffered three years of injustice, determined to avoid the world. When the boss and Richard's wife saw the news, they immediately understood what Richard had done at that time. Anxious to save himself, Daniel was killed by his own letters. Well, that's all for this issue. Don't forget to follow and like my videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time.